You know, my game reviews are pretty boring. I pretty much love every game that I've reviewed. To shake things up, we're actually going to look at a game that I wasn't that impressed with. This is Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm Curtain Call. For the, like, three of you who don't know this, there was a game released before this called Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm, in which you pretty much just play a rhythm game to Final Fantasy music. Not exactly complicated. The game tried to differentiate itself by giving different characters stats, abilities, upgrades, pretty much basic stuff you would find in a Final Fantasy game. It was a neat little idea, and I actually had a lot of fun with it. I played through some of the songs multiple, multiple times. When I heard there was a second one on the way, I had to pre-order it immediately. The story of Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm was that after Dissidia happened, all of the characters got stuck in this weird parallel dimension thingy where, in order to get home, they needed to go through different lands based on the Final Fantasy universe and collect music notes. Admittedly, that's borderline Final Fantasy 13 Part 3 stupid, but eh, you know, it's Final Fantasy, obviously all of their games have to have some kind of story. Somebody at Square Onyx obviously thought this was a bad idea, because they decided to take all of the story out of Theater Rhythm altogether in Curtain Call. This isn't necessarily something that I minded because, let's be honest, the characters having to go back home by collecting music notes is kind of really, really, really dumb. But at the same time, since this is pretty much just an expansion pack, I kind of wish they would have, I don't know, given us a new story that didn't suck instead of just removing the idea of a story altogether. The chibi-style characters still look okay. I don't really have a problem with the way the game looks. The characters are adorable and all, but if I'm going to talk about something graphically, the thing I'd mainly like to talk about are the backgrounds. I think the backgrounds in the Theater Rhythm series are amazing. They bring back the magic of the old Final Fantasy games while still making them look modern and polished enough that they don't look like they're straight rips from the PlayStation 1, you know? One thing I do find very curious, though, is they don't seem to have made any kind of graphical improvements from the first one. Normally, when you're re-releasing pretty much the same game with some added content, they try to polish something, or they try to make something look a little bit better, but for this one, it's pretty much like they just used all of the assets from the first game and then added a few more. I really don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's something I felt I should note on anyway. For those who don't really know what's going on right now, let me explain. The game is set in four different playstyles. The first is the one you're looking at right now, which is also called a field song. The music you're listening to here is music that would normally take place while you were on, like, the overworld, or maybe inside of a certain town, dungeon, so on and so forth. The farther you can make your character travel in the time given during the song, the more goodies you get, and you make him travel by pretty much just doing well at the song. Remember earlier when I was talking about different characters have their different stats and abilities? Well, this is pretty much where they come into play. See, your characters have an agility and a luck stat, and those are the stats you want for field songs like this. The actual button layouts aren't very complicated either. You tap it when it's red, you move it along the line when it's green, and you move it in the direction of the arrow when it's yellow. Moving on. This is a battle song. The music you'll find here, as you can expect, is mainly the battle themes and the boss themes of all of the Final Fantasy games. For these stages, you'll want characters with a high strength and magic, because those are the characters that can take out the monsters the fastest. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this because I figured you could figure it out, but you're fighting monsters! And finally, what you're watching here is an EMS, otherwise known as an event song. The music is comprised of openings, endings, and cutscene music pretty much, and what you're watching right now is somebody playing over a cutscene. These are easily my favorite part of the entire game, because the epic cutscene that goes on in the background and the way that the little melody thing kind of leads you around to look at all of it is just beautiful. Normally in rhythm games with some kind of cutscene thing like this, you're just looking at one static line, so you don't really get to see the action, but with something like this, your eye is being led towards all of the action on the screen, so you can still watch it. It still has red taps, green follows, and yellow arrows. All of these song types were kept for Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm Curtain Call, and they didn't really add any new ones, they just stuck with all of the old ones. Which is fine, I guess. 
the main thing I can say about it is the main thing I've been saying about everything pretty much so far, which is there's really not much of a change. Oh, wait a second. Curveball! There was one huge change that happened with event music songs, like the one you're seeing now. These songs, the most fun part of the game, are completely locked off until you play more of the game. This change is garbage. I know that you should reward players with more fun sections and more fun things to do, but why didn't they just give us these songs and then have the unlockables just be new songs? I could understand if they only wanted to give us, like, some of the EMS songs so that we can play those alongside the other songs, but no, you have to unlock the very first one and then every single one after that. You unlock one every once in a while when you hit 500 new points. You can get 500 points every 3 to 4 songs, depending on how good you are and depending on what difficulty you're playing on. But that means to play through them all, you have to go through like 90 songs, and that's just not good. It's just not a good idea at all. If they were looking to give you incentive to play, they should have done it with other types of rewards, like new characters are enough of an incentive, new backgrounds, new classic songs. All of this stuff is fine, but you don't take away an entire gameplay mode and then give us parts of the gameplay mode every, like, 10 minutes of gameplay. That's just dumb. Speaking of things that shouldn't have to be unlocked, the most revolutionary thing the Curtain Call brings to the table is this new mode called Quest Mode. This is by far the best part of the game and the one thing I'm actually very, very pleased with. You're given a map screen, and you have your choice of which stage you'd like to go to next, unless you're on a linear path. Since you can't control exactly which songs are going to be along your path, it's actually a nice little way to get you to play songs that you normally wouldn't have paid any attention to. Going through the song list can be a little bit daunting, and this is a really fun and nice way to get you to play songs that you normally wouldn't have even paid attention to. This mode is also how you'll be unlocking a majority of your characters, and there are a lot to unlock. At the beginning of the game, you select four characters, and that decides what your starting music is going to be, and those are the only four characters you're allowed to have until you unlock the rest. That's right, this time you don't even get to play as all of the heroes or switch up your party until you start unlocking them. The cast of characters hits over 60, so you're going to have to go through this mode quite a lot if you want to get the entire roster. This game being mainly a rhythm game, unlocking new characters isn't quite as important as it would be in a regular RPG, and this is both a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you're not really missing much if you don't get every single character, and you can mainly focus on the characters from the games that you truly love. And it's also a bad thing because it means there's less of an incentive to actually go and try to get them. It's like, you're going through this huge chore trying to get all of the characters in the game, and it just really doesn't have much of a payoff. Getting off of characters though, the main reason you would be playing this is for the music, and Final Fantasy does have some very beautiful music. Even the games that you absolutely hate, like Final Fantasy X-2, or the 13 series, or Final Fantasy XII, if you don't like those games, you can still find music in it that you really enjoy. The 13 series in particular has some of the best music in Final Fantasy history, and hardly anybody knows about it because, well, let's be honest, nobody really played those games. The original Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm had a little over 70, but less than 80 songs. I think it was something like 75 or 77. But the new Curtain Call game comes out with, get ready for it, 221 songs base and 50 downloadable songs for a grand total of 271. Admittedly, this is where I fold a little bit, because this is the one area where Theater Rhythm Curtain Call really brings it to the table. 221 songs base. That is ridiculous. That is gameplay for miles. But I'm going to play Devil's Advocate here, because that also has a slight downside. With all of the music they've added, it can be really difficult to find the good songs. Let's be honest here, ladies and gentlemen, as good as the music in Final Fantasy is, all 221 songs can't possibly be a hit. In fact, I can think of about 50 songs, maybe, that I really truly loved enough to play over and over and over again. 50 songs is already quite daunting, but the fact that you have to go through 221 songs to find those 50 songs is ridiculous. 
Another problem I have with new songs in particular are they seem to drag on a little bit too long. Some of the songs, especially the field music, they could have cut down to like two and a half or so minutes, but they drag out to like three, four, sometimes as much as five minutes each, which is really daunting. If you really love the Final Fantasy field music, then it's not that big of a deal, obviously, but with again with 221 songs you're gonna find some songs that you don't like as much and they drag on forever with all of that out of the way let's start wrapping this thing up while I love the concept of the first game I don't feel that they did enough with Final Fantasy theater rhythm curtain call to really warrant its $40 price tag don't get me wrong, it's still a great game, and I still had a lot of fun with it, but it just doesn't bring enough to the table to come out at another $40. If you played the original Theater Rhythm, and you just want to experience the new characters, new stages, new themes, then I'm setting the worth it price at $20. I think $20 is justifiable for playing all of the new songs. There are so, so many new songs, playing with the new characters, and having to go through the trudge of re-leveling up your characters and unlocking most of the best parts of the game. If you skipped out on the first Theater Rhythm and want to pick up the second one, then I'm setting the worth it price at about $25 to $30, depending on your tolerance for rhythm games. You didn't pour hours into the old Theater Rhythm, so it's not like you have to go through the trudge of unlocking everything again or leveling up your characters again, and you also probably won't notice any of the minor things that I have gripes with, because you didn't play the first one. I'd say the average gamer is going to get about 5-7 to seven hours out of this depending on how tolerable they are to the music, and if you are truly just a Final Fantasy music enthusiast, you're probably going to find about 25-30 to 30 hours worth of gameplay just trying to get everything unlocked. That includes getting perfects on songs, getting all of the achievements, and maxing out on those points. If you enjoyed this review, then don't forget to leave it a like. Those likes really do help us out. Subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news, and leave me your thoughts on the Theater Rhythm series in the comments section below. Until next time, gamers, this was Kudo, signing off.